Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a uh, council member Ben Kalos. Twenty-two thousand seven hundred and seven children woke up in a shelter this morning. New York City needs to do, build more supportive housing in every neighborhood to get more than 40,000 parents and children out of shelters and into permanent housing. As the homeless crisis grew, I worked with Senator Liz Krueger and with support from Council Member Dan Gorodnik and Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, we launched the Eastside Task Force for Homeless Outreach and Services to connect city agencies with nonprofits and faith-based institutions providing direct services to the homeless and to build new supportive housing on the Upper East Side. Give me your tired, your poor. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. Lady Liberty welcomes you and we welcome you here on the Upper East Side where, you will, where we will feed you, where we will clothe you, where we will build you supportive housing. Our city's homeless women and children need supportive housing that can help them succeed, and that's what they are getting from women in need. Thank you to Women in Need for bringing more supportive housing to the Upper East Side along with Azimuth Development. Eastside Task Force for Homeless Outreach and Services, members for their leadership, fellow elected officials, Community Board 8 Manhattan, to our principals, to our parents, for teaching us and our children to welcome supportive housing and homeless. Our message from the Upper East Side is clear and unequivocal. This supportive housing is welcome and we must build more. Good. Today we are joined by our key partners and leaders in helping the homeless Department of Social Services Commissioner Steve Banks, Office of Congress Member Carol Maloney, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Senator Liz Kruger, Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright, Community Board 8 Manhattan Chair Jim Kleins, Christine Quinn's former Speaker and Executive Director of Women in Need, Jennifer Reddle, Rector of Church of the Epiphany, Beverly Dempsey, Reverend for Jan Hoos Church, Neil Sarkar from Eastside Middle School Student Council, Katrina Kaur from Eastside Middle School Student Council, Jack Zimmerman and Dana Garcia, Eastside Middle School Student Council, Wyatt Mokay, Student Council President at Eastside School for Social Action, and Guido Savatovsky, who is the developer at Azimuth. And we are all here today representing every facet of the community to welcome supportive housing. All of New York is facing a crisis when it comes to homelessness, and we're all responsible for helping those in need. I'd like to now ask Christine Quinn uh, to say a few words, and please join me in welcoming her. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. And I want to first thank uh, all of the public school students who are with us today. If I could ask everybody to give them a particularly big Yay! round of applause. Yay! And uh, it's so great. You know, sometimes when facilities open on blocks where there's schools, people aren't happy about that. But these are going to be women and children who live in this building. And they're going to be your fellow classmates. And so for us to be able to tell the families we're working with, that not only there's a school on the block, a good school on the block, the student leaders and the school leaders showed up to say welcome, that you have no idea how encouraging and happy and what that'll mean to our families. So thank you guys so very, very much. Um, I also want to thank all of the East Side elected officials, particularly Council Member Kalos, for having an East Side Supportive Housing Task Force to begin with. I don't know how many neighborhoods have that, and it makes an enormous difference. And I want to thank Liz Krueger and Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright and Gail Brewer and Congressmember Maloney for all being part of this effort. And thank God for Congressmember Maloney. Uh, and I think we all know why uh, at, on this day today. I also want to thank uh, our Department of Social Service Commissioner Steve Banks and Mayor de Blasio because this con real push and elevated conversation around supportive housing in New York City really was kicked off in earnest, uh, not this past November, the November before that, in a significant Times Square press conference by the mayor with Steve and others. So thank you. Without them, we wouldn't be able to even bring this conversation. I also want to thank our friends at Azimuth Development Court, uh, particularly Guido, because this happened in a way 
that things don't happen, right? Often when the phone rings at win, it's not always good news, right? Some challenging client has had an issue, a neighborhood community board has said no, and thank you community board chair for being here. Instead, our vice president for real estate picked up the phone and a man we didn't know said, would you like a building on East 91st between 1st and 2nd? I think Jerry was probably right stunned and didn't know what to say. So he came into my office and I said, okay, this sounds like a really mean joke. So call our lawyers, go on the internet, et cetera, et cetera, research this guy. Is he for real? No, he's for real. He's a real estate guy. Well, he must be an evil, horrible real estate person. <laughs> call the Real Estate Board of New York, research him further. And none of those cynical New York fears that I had were true. In fact, the Santa Claus who called that day is with us today. So thank you very, very much. And this building is critically important. Because right now, there's over 60,000 people in shelter. And to no one's happiness, the, la the largest number in the city's history. 70% of those people are families with children, a fact that a lot of New Yorkers don't know. And given the nature of poverty, 92% of those families are headed by single women. Now, why is there such a large number of families in shelter? Well, there's a lot of answers, and Steve and the elected officials and I could go on and on, but a big part of the answer is that the door out of shelter isn't open as wide as it should be. Rents are escalating. We have these terrific vouchers that Mayor de Blasio put in place, and a lot of landlords are not taking them, even though that's discrimination and it's against the law. How do we open the door wider, even if everything else was going perfectly? we build supportive housing. Because probably 30 to 40% of our homeless families will only succeed independently. Because in my opinion, we're worse, a worse statistic for all of us than how many people are in shelter or how many people have to come back to shelter. Because that's when we've really failed somebody. And supportive housing, permanent housing with case management services, with counseling services, with support groups. And think about all of our lives. We have all those things, right? Some of us have nannies, some of us have cleaning people, some of us have therapists, some of us have psychiatrists, some of us have tutors, some of us have after school help, some of us have all of the above. Uh, that's all we're gonna make sure is here for people who don't necessarily have the resources to pay for it. And 98% of the families Wynn has placed in supportive housing, whether it's one we run or somebody else, have remained independently living over the long term and not returned to shelter. That's an amazing statistic you will expand. <clears throat> now, I also want to say, and this is to the Upper East Side and all the elected officials and the communities, uh, credit and Tequito's credit. East 91st, between 1st and 2nd, is not where people think things like this usually get built. Now, you took the first step, Guido, because you made the call and thought, you know what, this is the right place. And then we were so blessed to have a department that agreed. And then to have a council member who's formed a task force and all the other elected officials and all the community boards and the principal and the children to agree with that. That doesn't happen everywhere. And it often doesn't happen in the neighborhoods we assume are too affluent to want it to happen. Shame on us for that assumption. And you are proving today that the way we end the homeless crisis, the way we cite all the supportive housing we need, the way we meet the mayor's challenge of opening more homeless shelters so we can get out of hotels and clusters is by not making assumptions about each other, by not judging people who need help, but by coming together. So I thank you for this building. I thank you for the ability to serve the families who would, will live here. I thank you for the big welcome at the school and the churches and the uh, religious institutions have put out and I can't wait. So listen to me. I don't want calls, you know, that you delayed in the building, <laughs> right? I want, this needs to open on time. Cost me a day. <laughs> A couple of hours, a couple of hours. So I can't wait till we're back cutting the ribbon and welcoming our families in. And I'll just close 
really quickly because worse than an elected official with a mic is a former elected official because we don't get them as much. Um, <laughs> I recently visited a building in the Bronx. A half of it's affordable housing, half of it's supported. We had about 30 of the moms in a conference room and at the end of the meeting, we said we'd love to form an advocacy committee in the conference and the, the supportive housing. Well, the meeting didn't end because they had clear ideas of what they wanted to do. But what they most wanted to do, so hopefully this will help, is go around the city and tell people how supportive housing has changed their and their children's lives. Because homeless children are twice as likely to be homeless adults as non-homeless children. That's the story you're going to replicate today. And those women were proud and had painted God bless my home on their doors and had unbelievably beautifully decorated apartments with love and kind of wonder in the apartments. So thank you guys for bringing that opportunity again to women here. Great. All right. Now I'd like to uh, welcome our Commissioner for Department of Social Services, uh, Steve Banks, with the promise that he will bring more supportive housing to the Upper East Side. Yay. Right. Good morning. I have to say I've been in a lot of uh, openings over the years, but not with this great group of school children and teachers and principals. This is a wonderful moment, and I have to say uh, that it provides a good example for the entire city to be here with school children and teachers and principal welcoming uh, this important resource into the community. And I'm proud to be here with my old friend Chris Quinn. We've uh, known each other and worked together since we were younger. Younger. <laughs> younger. I guess that's it. I won't say when. Right, right. Uh, but this is a very important initiative uh, for us to be working uh, with Wynn on and we partner with Wynn on so many different projects. But this is the mayor's commitment, an unprecedented commitment to 15,000 supportive housing units. Uh, the first 550 units will be up uh, this year. And with partnership with Wynn and other terrific not-for-profit providers, there will be more. And we will begin to turn the tide, as the mayor uh, announced recently, on homelessness. It's increased 115 percent. That's right, 115 percent since 1994, including a 38% increase between 2011 and 2014. And as Chris said, the face of homelessness now is children and families. Uh, that wasn't uh, the way that people perceived homelessness when I began as a legal aid lawyer uh, almost four decades ago representing homeless people in the city. And that's why it's so important that communities like this are welcoming to our fellow New Yorkers. We know that New Yorkers become homeless from literally every community in the city, and that's what the mayor's vision is in terms of moving forward with a uh, plan to make sure that people are connected back to their communities and supportive housing as the gold standard. It is uh, got a proven track record of keeping people stable uh, once they move out of shelter because of the wraparound services and the high quality provision of services by reputable not-for-profits and our great developer partners that create these kinds of things. But I also have to say and end on this note, the leadership of our your elected officials in this community uh, is the key to the success of moving forward with addressing homelessness in the city. Council member has personally sat with us and gone over specific individuals who are homeless on the streets in this community. Uh, and uh, we have worked together to bring people off the streets, and that is an extraordinary commitment. Uh, Senator Kruger, who I also go back many years with, <laughs> has been a longstanding champion for programs like this and has been very clear about the welcoming them in the neighborhood. Assemblymember Seabright, we're new colleagues, but I know we're going to have a long working relationship, and it's so important uh, that this kind of uh, initiative has your support and the support of the community. Of course, Bar President. Uh, uh, Brewer knows this issue well, as does uh, Congressmember Maloney. But the community board is here, too. Yes. Yay! And I think that that is where uh, local um, support really is grounded in this neighborhood. And uh, I'm going to cite you early and often as I travel <laughs> around the city and we move forward with the 15,000 units of supportive housing, of which these units are a critical uh, part. So thank you all for your support and I appreciate the leadership from all of you to make this project happen. And so a lot of this is about uh, building a future and uh, 
the children are our future. And so if you can join me in welcoming Dana Garcia and Jack Zimmerman, Eastside Middle School Council speaking. Yay! Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jack Zimmerman, and I'm Dana Garcia. Ever since we found out about the affordable housing project being built by the Women in Need organization, we have wanted to get involved. We have been doing all the research we can on affordable housing in general. We have read many, many studies that have always backed up our belief that affordable housing is good for the neighborhood and helps homeless people get off the streets of New York City. Affordable housing is beneficial in many ways. For one, it helps the neighborhood by keeping homeless people off the streets. In a study done by the New York Times from 1996 to 2006, it proved that housing values did not decrease and actually increased at the same rate it would have if there were, were no affordable housing buildings. If we don't build this affordable housing a unit, it would simply increase the number of people who are who are who live in subsidized or illegal apartments. It also led to, it would also it would it will also lead to more homelessness and more overcrowded apartments. These will forego food, medical care, and other basic necess necessities. As good Samaritans and people who care about the community, we cannot allow this to happen. We must help in any way we can. One way we could do this is by supporting this affordable housing unit and welcoming it to this great neighborhood. Homelessness amongst children has a very negative impact. They do not have a set school and are constantly moving and missing school. As children, we take the simple things for granted, such as having a sense of community and friends. These kids and families don't have that kind of love. Affordable housing helps a community. It aids a family during hard times. It, it, it is a dream to many people. We support that dream and we hope all of you do too. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, come here, come here. oh my God! We need copies. To make that go viral. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Great job. Uh, and so, somebody who's being doing a great job for a very, very long time, even before being an elected official, fighting hunger and doing what she can to feed the homeless and those in need, is uh, our own. State Senator Liz Kruger, who helped get the East Side Task Force for Homeless Outreach and Services Thank off the you. ground. Thank you. All right, nobody should have to go after those right. children. Right. So <laughs> you are not forgiven, Ben right. Kalos. All right, and I'm just proud to be here as one of the whole crowd of elected officials from the East Side of Manhattan to say, welcome, Win. Welcome, Commissioner Banks. We understand as New Yorkers the crisis we are facing of a lack of affordable housing, failures at every level of government to make sure we are providing the resources that people need, the resources that families and children need. We should be listening to school children more often. Thank you very much. And the fact is, the part that's really important, I think, from this event today is that, as you've heard over and over again, we have a whole community standing together saying, we get it. Every community needs to do its share of making sure we work for equity, fairness, justice, affordable housing, supportive housing, that a society that would step back and ignore the fact that we have 60,000 homeless people in the city of New York, the majority of whom are families with children, a society who would say, I don't care, I don't want to deal with that in my neighborhood. That is not a society I want to live in. And so I am so proud that I get to represent districts and communities who say, we get it. We need to be there for everybody. So we're very glad to do what we can to be there for Commissioner Banks and his agenda, the mayor and his agenda to address this crisis, and are always proud to welcome excellent not-for-profit organizations into our communities to provide the services needed. So welcome Chris Quinn Thank and you. Wynn, and really for Ben Kalis for taking the lead in realizing we needed to sit down, work together, organize, and then be there for anything and everything that comes up. And it does every single day, doesn't it, Ben? <laughs> Something comes up every day. So I'm glad to be here with everybody. And thank you, the school children, for, for being here and for speaking out so eloquently. Thank you. Thank you.
from Eastside Middle School Student Council. We're also joined by uh, uh, Katarina Kaur and Neil Sarkar. Our city is dealing with a homeless crisis. We as students and community members believe that the Woman in Need Supportive Housing Project would help alleviate that crisis. As Ms. Quinn stated earlier, 70% of homeless New Yorkers are families with children. By having the Supportive Housing Project, homeless children, which make up nearly 40% of the people in, in shelters, will begin to have a sense of solidity. A problem for homeless mothers with school-aged children is that there is a long commute from the shelter that the family is staying at for the night to their children's school. With the new Supportive Housing Project, students will be able to attend nearby schools that offer a great education, including Eastside Middle School, which is where I'm a current eighth grader. We hope to see that innocent children can focus on the most important part of their young lives, education. The right school can provide routine, nourishment, and the guiding hand of responsible adults. The Upper East Side is a neighborhood that is genial and hospitable. The entire community looks forward to supporting homeless mothers and their children so that the, their family can flourish in every aspect possible. Thank you. Good morning. As a student at Eastside Middle School, I recognize that the Women in Need Supporting Housing is an amazing initiative that will create a supportive and encouraging environment for homeless mothers and their children. This will impact our community in a positive way by showing that the homeless community isn't something to fear and isn't something to disregard. Instead, it will provide ways that we can all contribute to our community through the shelter. The shelter itself is a wonderful project because it is important for young children to have the ability to focus on their learning. They will know that they have a place to sleep every night, which is a luxury that many of us take for granted. They will have semi-permanent housing, which will allow for the aspect of stability in everyday life. Overall, it is important that we support this project so that these children and their mothers are able to sustain themselves and ultimately leave supportive housing. But until then, they will be provided with a welcoming and kind environment to thrive both academically and in their careers, but and also leaving a healthy and successful life. Thank you guys. No wonder the younger ones are so great. I got all of you guys. Uh, I just uh, want to thank yeah, our uh, principal and teachers at Eastside Middle School, Principal David Getz. And yeah. The, uh, yeah. these, uh, these kids are amazing and yeah. come with a lot, but uh, it, it's got to be something with the teaching too. So just thank you very much. That vocabulary. Uh, yes. Uh, and so. Uh, a champion for women's issues, one who has already given uh, Christine Quinn and win an award, yes. our assembly member Rebecca Seawright. Yay. Thank you, council member. It's, it's a great privilege and honor to be here, and I've been a longtime admirer and supporter of Christine Quinn and her work and the Women in Need organization. Commissioner, Senator, and Representative from the Congresswoman Maloney's office, thank you all. Homelessness is a weapon of mass destruction. Um, and we must fight and do all that we can. This past week I participated in a press conference in Albany where the Women's Legislative Caucus and Senator Kruger as a member collected and did a drive of sanitary napkins and tampons to give to women in homeless shelters. So I see some future projects coming down there the line go. that we need some students. My son is a proud graduate of Eastside Middle and I uh, would love to have some of you as interns in Yay! my office. Yay! And Principal Getz, thank you so much for your leadership. We're going to continue to fight uh, in Albany for, for more public housing dollars. And thank you again to the best city councilman, Ben Kalos, for your great leadership. Yay! So our uh, next speaker is uh, Wyatt Moke, And he's from uh, PS 527, which is literally uh, a stone's throw away, All right. and uh, if his classmates can also join him, come on, come on. Come on. Why don't you go on the other side, honey? Go over here. Got to set up the shot. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is my neighborhood, and it's very nice to live. In. It looks like other people think that it is nice too, because they are building a lot of new buildings and houses here. I'm glad that can you some speak of. Speak up a lot louder. I'm glad that some of Good these job. new apartments will be f for mothers and children that don't have homes and really need a place to live. 
Our neighborhoods have all kinds of people. Some are rich and some are not. The people who will live in this supportive housing will fit into our community also and further enchant the neighborhood's diversity. A diverse neighborhood is a vibrant neighborhood. My home is where I can find my parents and sister and my sports trophies. It is where I can find rest and where I can go to relax and feel safe. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have a home. Like most of the homeless children and their mothers who actually currently made the majority um who currently made the majority made up the make up the majority of the city's homeless population. Having shelter is among the basic needs of, of any human being along with food, water and clothing. Homelessness to me is a major social injustice. One of the main reasons for it is not having affordable housing. A good way to solve homelessness is to provide supportive housing such as what will be built here to those who need it the most one family at a time. I'm glad that we will have that here in our neighborhood. It is an example of what in of what a responsible society must do to help these who need it the most. As a student at PS527, the East Side School for Social Action, a school that values the importance of being inclusive and teaches students about social justice, I'm happy to welcome this supportive housing program to our beautiful East Side Upper East Side community. Thank you. Thank you. And can you share your name and, and say what you? How old are you, honey? Uh, nine. Nine. Can you grab a, can you stand right there and tell us your name? And hold on one second, let's just, uh, there we go. And what's your name? Kira. Okay, Kira, nice to meet you. I am glad that the children and their mothers who do not have a place to live will be able to have a home they feel safe in. It is, it is a good thing to help them. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name, honey? Kira. Evan? Evan and you're Kira. Evan, how old are you? I'm six years old. Six. And how old are you? Seven. And doesn't Evan have the coolest glasses anybody has <laughs> ever, ever seen? Um, Thank you. Thank you guys. Can I give you all a hug? Thank you. And we'll be calling you guys later for copies of your speeches if it's okay, because we want to put them on our website. And yours may become part of a fundraising effort, if that's okay. With <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. And we just want to thank uh, Principal uh, uh, Dan McCormick at PS 527 School for Social Action for doing such a great job educating our kids. And we also have the PTAs from both schools Yay! who are supportive, and that's also uh, pretty big. Uh, I'd like to now welcome uh, from the Office of Congress member Carol Maloney, uh, Minna Elias. Yeah. Good morning. They say in show business and politics, never follow children. But here I am, so I'll do my best. Um, on behalf of Congresswoman Maloney, who is in Washington, um, unfortunately, uh, dealing with the Affordable Care Act, um, but the Congresswoman is incredibly supportive of this project, and uh, women in need, and especially under the leadership of the great Christine Quinn, who does a fabulous job. Um, the neighborhood is welcoming this project because it is a great project and because supportive housing run well is a great neighbor. And this community welcomes great neighbors like women in need. Particularly thank the developer who has generously made this property available. That's amazing. You know, land in this city is such a premium. It's almost impossible to find a site of this quality in this community, in this area. Um, <clears throat> you are, uh, we are fortunate to have great representation. Ben Kalos, who has been so supportive of this project and brought us all together, 
State Senator Liz Krueger, Assemblywoman Rebecca Seawright, Borough President Gail Brewer. This is a great community that works together. Um, and the Congresswoman is grateful to her colleagues for all of their work on this issue. Um, we have a crisis in this community, in this city, uh, with 60,000 homeless people, two-thirds of whom are families, nearly 23,000 are children. Um, the families, 92% are headed by women. One of the reasons you find that women-owned families are prone to homelessness is quite simply they're not earning enough to be able to afford the escalating rents uh, that we have. Um, the, another factor of this um, that is affecting homeless children is that uh, they only get to go to school 84% of the time. Their shelters are often located remote from their schools. Um, they are often having to travel distances, and the confusion of their lives makes it difficult to attend school. Um, this is a great community. We have great schools, and it's wonderful that the schools are going to be welcoming these children. Um, but one of the important factors that we haven't really heard talk about much is that there will be a new Sunshine Early Learning Center oh, at yes, this right. site. Yeah, good point. And uh, they say that early education is the most important factor in helping ch set up children for future success. Um, the Congresswoman has been a great supporter of early childhood education. Um, she has had several bills. She uh, issued a study through the Joint Economic Committee, which she's vice chair. And the most important factor in success is early education. Having this program at this facility is one of the most important supports that it's providing. So thank you all, um, and thanks particularly, thank Christine you. Quinn. Thank Carolyn, please. Uh, thank you, uh, and I'd like to invite uh, Guido Sabatovsky, uh, who is uh, the developer of this project, uh, the man of the hour, and he hopefully will tell us a little bit more about the project, the open space that this unique project has, and about how all this came together. Yay! So, we were just looking for a tenant. <laughs> Uh, um, good morning. Um, I'm Guido Subotowski, president of Azimuth Development Group. Um, you know, I, I actually consider myself as a developer predominantly of you know affordable and mixed income and supportive housing. Um, you know, I consider ourselves to be very, very lucky uh, to be able to go to work every day and see the product of you know what we of what we are able to do. Um, this particular project was one that I, I would certainly call one of the more interesting ones, in that we literally did. Uh, I felt like a telemarketer and yeah. cold calling <laughs> people to say, hey, will somebody take our building on East 91st Street and 2nd Avenue? And uh, we were introduced to Christine Quinn and her group and Jerry Masuk and, uh, and the wonderful folks at, at Wynn. And it took a while for them to get back. And I said, hey, why doesn't anybody want this building? And now I know it's because nobody believed that we were actually <laughs> willing that we were actually willing to do it. But, um, you know, the, the folks at Wynn were extremely helpful and, no pun intended, supportive um, in, in helping us through the process. And, uh, you know, the folks at HPD and Councilmember Kalos and the various elected officials to with, uh, without, we, without them, we would not be here today. So, you know, thank you to all of you. Um, just a little bit about, you know, the building itself, um, you know, what you see here now, which we've been able to shut down for the day, uh, is ultimately going to give way to a seven-story building with 17 units of permanently supportive housing that will be obviously under WINS control. Uh, there will be office space for social services. There will be a new 7,000 square foot daycare center to be operated by Sunshine Early Learning Center. Uh, we thank them for their help. Uh, the building, please. <laughs> The building will have outdoor space exclusively for the use of the tenants. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think there's anything much better than a, you know, that, than a brand new building in the heart of the Upper East Side for the permanent use of wind. So, um, you know, we thank you for inviting us. We thank you for the opportunity to speak. We thank you for all of your support, and uh, we look forward to being back the next time. So, thank you all thank very much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We're joined by several members of the community board, so I'll ask all those members to please uh, come up and if David Rosenstein could say a few words on their behalf. Rita, come on. Yeah, yeah. Marco.
Uh, my name is Dave Rosenstein. I'm a member of uh, Community Board 8. Uh, I happen to live around the corner. I've been here for 50 years, so I'm very familiar with this uh, this community. And I live across the street. Oh, Rita lives in Knickerbocker, which originally was affordable housing. Affordable housing. Right. And Particularly how do both of you feel about supportive housing in your backyard? Love it. Love it. This well, is break the cycle. We're going to break the homeless cycle. That's right. Forever. That's our, that's our motto. That's it. Break the homeless cycle. Personally speaking, I serve as a trustee of a nonprofit organization that has three supportive housing buildings, one in the Lower East Side on 6th Street, people with HIV AIDS, two in the Bronx, one for uh, families, one for individuals. Uh, I made a list of the criteria that I thought this must have, and it covers all of them. These are homes. These are homes for moms and kids, one, two bedroom apartments, well managed, staff at the desk, nobody wanders in and out on, as, on their own, uh, access to the child care facility for the children because it's really important. These kids have got, a, they've got an opportunity to get a leg up on life, to get involved with the community, supportive services which are vital. Well run supportive housing is an asset to the community and of course to the people that live there. And thank God for nonprofits like Wynn and frankly for the one that I'm involved with because we care and we do it right. So uh, as a neighbor, I'm happy to have them here. It's going to be fine. Nobody should have any anxiety because this is a well-run organization. Nobody's going to be wandering in and out. Uh, it's great. That's all I can say. Thank you. Uh, can I say something? Uh, oh, I'd like to Thank, thank you very much. And so we s saved the, the best for last because uh, it's one thing to talk about it, but we have great direct service providers like when we also have a tremendous group of faith-based organizations in the community that have been doing this work year in, year out, day in, day out, and helping whoever comes in the door. And uh, one of the best programs we have is at Church of the Epiphany, uh, and it's a Wednesday night soup kitchen. And if you can please join us in welcoming uh, Rector Jennifer Reddell. Well, thank you. It is so good to be here. It's so great to welcome Wynn. We are very excited about that. Um, partly because it seems like there's a lot of people who call themselves Christians these days yeah. who um, seem to have missed something. <laughs> that when you see someone who is vulnerable, they don't want to help, particularly if the person who's vulnerable is a woman, particularly if she's a mom, and particularly if she doesn't have some husband around. So, and if she's not white. And if she's not white. And so Jesus did something different with all of those people. Jesus always welcomed them. Um, Jesus always said to help people when they needed it. And he taught us about how to love our neighbor. And he told us a story about that where he said that the way you love your neighbor and the way you care for your neighbor is that when you see them in a ditch, you don't walk by. And you don't just look at them. You stop, you help them out, you bind up their wounds, you carry them someplace safe, and then you pay for it. That's the part of the story maybe we forget sometimes. You pay for it until they are healthy and whole and able to take care of themselves. And so we are so happy to have you guys here. The Episcopal Church welcomes you. I hope all people of faith welcome you. Um, I live around the corner. I'm a single mom, so this sounds perfect to me. And if you have, when you get pushed back, you know, send them to me and I'll talk Jesus with them. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll come to an agreement. There you so. Go. Thank, thank you, you, and thank you for making this happen. Thank you, everybody. I just want to thank our tremendous speakers. Uh, this is really long, even for elected officials, and <laughs> everyone was incredibly uh, uh, well-behaved and did a good job. So I just want to thank everyone. And so we have some members of the press. If you have any questions, feel free to ask anyone you wish. Early Learning Center is not going to be run by WIN. It's going to be run by a not-for-profit organization that runs child care, early uh, childhood services. The folks in the building are obviously going to have access to that, but I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's enough spots that it would be open to others in the neighborhood, whatever vacancy. So that's just also a great benefit to the neighborhood that Guido is bringing, because it'll help our moms, but it'll help other families as well. And it will be 
in some, you know, a traditional early learning center, you know, might have more facts, but you can rest assured it'll be run to the highest uh, standards. At when we have childcare and early learning facilities in all of our shelters. Of our own initiative, just to give you a sense, we partner with uh, Bank Street College because we want to make sure that it's not just a place where children are having fun, but those little ones are learning in childcare. We'll bring, with Guido's you know, support in, in the provider that, gets, that works here, that same kind of commitment, because that, that's really what, a, as the representative of Carolyn Lowy's office said, we need, because homeless children are behind, even the ones who are you know, the brightest. And we need to deal with that, and we also need to make sure that the center here has a, a, a commitment to trauma-informed care, because homelessness is a trauma. It's a trauma for the adult, it's a trauma for the child. So this provider will also embrace that uh, uh, clinical commitment and vision. Do we have employment assistance? Pardon me? Do we have employment assistance? Yes. Yeah. Wynn has a very significant, we don't call it job training because over half of the moms in our shelter are working. So uh, we call it income building. And right now we have, I have to say, quite a terrific program. Uh, it's supported uh, mostly by the funding from PepsiCo and BlackRock. And we're really kind of setting it up in a way, yes, there's resume writing, yes, there's interview training, but we're really setting it up kind of in tracks with industries. And right now, industries are doing the training, getting the moms certified in those industries, and then the moms get to apply to those companies. And now that this will be our, when it opens, third congregate supportive housing facility, and then a large one in Brooklyn after that, we're gonna take that same model and bring it to supportive housing. Any other questions? Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for all of our speakers and uh, hope to be back here again for a ribbon cutting and for other uh, events to welcome yeah. more supportive housing to the district. Yay. Yay.